Hi, it's Vaughn and Claire from Timbu, and this is Deconstructing IoT. In this week's episode, we're interviewing Dr. Steve Koonin, founding director at the Center for Urban Science and Progress. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch part two next week. Today, we're here with Dr. Steve Koonin, founding director of the Center for Urban Science and Progress. Dr. Koonin was previously the chief scientist at BP and also served as undersecretary for science at the Department of Energy under the Obama administration. Thank you so much for talking with us. Happy to talk with you. So CUSP is coming up on its third anniversary um, after having established itself as a leading institution in urban informatics research and um, choosing New York City as its living laboratory. For those of our audience who aren't familiar, could you say a bit about CUSP's mission and how it originated? So CUSP is part of New York City's Applied Sciences Initiative, which was started by Mayor Bloomberg about five years ago. We're one of the several institutions that sprung out of that initiative. Our goal is about data and big cities, and in particular, the application of big data techniques to New York City. We're a research and education institution centered in NYU, New York University, but in fact with partnerships, several universities around the world, as well as a number of corporations and government entities. We do research in acquiring, integrating, and analyzing data to improve cities, and we also do an educational program in that same subject. So New York City is definitely fertile ground for collecting and analyzing data about city life. How do you and the other researchers at CUSP go about prioritizing what data is most valuable to collect? Well, a lot of it is driven by the problems we're working on. And we work on problems that are either uh, given to us by some of our government partners or generated by ourselves because we think that it would be an interesting thing to do to move the technology forward. And so largely the data cleaning integration uh, is driven by the problems we're working on, although of course just some data sets you've just got to have because they're the base landscape of the city. Demographics, uh, income, um, things of that sort. So research of urban life is certainly not new. We've had census data, um, hospital records, crime data for a long time, but uh, sensing tools and IoT technology are making it possible to collect new kinds of data. What are some of the most novel or interesting data sets that CUSP researchers are looking at um, that weren't possible 20 years ago? So one, of course, is just the digitization of the city records data. And now one can have highly granular, massive data sets about income, about uh, the medical system, about the education system. But for me as a technologist, what is uh, particularly interesting is can we generate new data sets that can tell us about uh, what's going on in the city. So taxi rides is one of our favorites. Uh, five years ago or six years ago, the Taxi and Limousine Commission uh, mandated that all taxi rides should record their start and stop locations, their time, their fare, their tip, and so on. And our researchers are analyzing some 800 million taxi trips, five years worth of data, to try to understand how do the cabs move around the city? How do external factors influence things like tipping percentages, for example? Another novel technique we're exploiting is what we call the urban observatory, where a single sensor, imagine a camera, for example, although there are others, uh, sitting on top of a tall building can see a thousand buildings at once and monitor, for example, their emissions, their light patterns, um, occupancy, things of that sort. This, we think, is a very interesting way to watch wa large swaths of the city with uh, very simple instrumentation. Absolutely. So I was actually just going to ask you about the Urban Observatory project, which is using camera data to basically look at the New York City skyline and observe energy usage mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, other activity. So what kinds of insights are you hoping to, to gather from this data? And how much data do you actually need before you can start you know, drawing meaningful yeah, that's a That's a really good uh, second question there. Uh, what we're learning so far is A, you know, we're at the proof of principle stage that A, one can do this. One can get reliable data. We're learning how to analyze it. For example, can we learn about the penetration of various lighting technologies? You know, each lighting technology has a different color whether it's a 
incandescent or fluorescent in LED. And so by watching, you can understand how people are adopting new lighting technologies and how that might affect their energy use. For example, the so-called rebound phenomena that occurs with new efficient technologies. Uh, another thing we're learning is not only about the lighting, but we're, we're seeing pollution in action, if you like. As the building boilers fire up, you can actually see the clouds come out then you can understand which building did it, where did it go, how much was it, and so on. So it's things like that. A third thing we think we can do, and we're of course partnering with Con Edison, is that we can help them understand when outages happen or when power is restored. Right now, the only way they know that is when somebody picks up the phone and says, hey, my lights are out. Uh, and clearly, if we're watching lights across the city, uh, we can help them in a pretty timely way. That would have been very useful during uh, Superstorm Sandy, for example. Mm -hmm. So I know in um, the Urban Observatory project, you all took great care to downgrade some of the images before to protect privacy before um, doing some analysis. And I was wondering what role you think CUSP has to play on setting precedents when it comes to citizen data and privacy. So, so that's, that's a, again, a, an area of very important focus for us. In the Urban Observatory case, all of the images were degraded sufficiently so that you can't say anything about what goes on in the buildings, apart from the fact that the light is on or off. Um, and furthermore, we analyze the data only in aggregate, so we never look at individual windows in the sense of, hey, look at that, it went on, for example. Um, more generally, this new world of big urban data raises very interesting questions of principle and of technology about how we preserve privacy while still going about learning how people in the city do things. And uh, we've, from the very beginning, had a chief data officer who was a lawyer by training, who establishes policies, procedures, training in order to make sure we stay on the right side of the privacy business. In addition, last year we sponsored a book uh, that was published in July, chapters written by lawyers, ethicists, data scientists, uh, to try to set up some principles, some norms about how we go about handling such data, at least in the research sphere. Sure. So if the Urban Observatory Project is uh, a project about collecting and analyzing data, then I would say the, the Hudson Yards Project is really about putting research into action. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a bit about um, it as a, as a quantified community and uh, also how it's developing? So the CUSP Quantified Community Project, which is led by our Deputy Director for Education, Constantine Contacosta, uh, is based on the following thinking. Uh, if you are a neuroscientist and you want to study the brain, one of the techniques is to take a square centimeter of the brain surface, of the cortex, and instrument every neuron in it. Mm -hmm. We can't quite do that yet, but you, we're getting to almost that point. Um, and so extrapolate as to how the broader city works. So the question is, can we take a slice of the city uh, with, let's say, 10,000 people in it, living, working, uh, and fully instrument it and use it to understand principles about how the broader city works? Uh, we're working on realizing that vision in collaboration with Related Company, uh, which is a big developer here in New York City. Uh, Related is doing the Hudson Yards project, which is a very large real estate development on the west side of Manhattan. And in partnership with them and a number of other companies, as you might imagine, a lot of real estate people, a lot of building technology people, a lot of social scientists are interested in this kind of project. So we're working out what sensors do you want to put to monitor the building, to monitor the environment, to monitor the people, uh, and then how would you use those measurements to go about extracting insights that you want. Uh, again, privacy is integral here to it, even more so than in the other projects we've talked about, uh, and we're working through all of that. As you mentioned, there are a lot of interested parties who want to know about this data. What is the process of partnering with city government organizations and corporations, and what are some of the challenges when it comes to integrating sensor systems in a yeah. project um, like this? So CUSP is a partnership. We have a number of corporate partners, some large companies, the utility companies, uh, we work with some small companies, uh, and we work with 13 of the New York City government agencies, as well as the Transit Authority and the Port Authority. Um, 
The government partners bring to us problems to work on, data, and an opportunity to demonstrate some of the solutions we think that we can develop. Um, it's a challenge working with them and with the corporate partners. The cultures are all different. Uh, government culture is very much a here and now, let's get it done because resources are thin and the jobs are enormous. The corporate culture is, uh, in the end, having spent time in the private sector, I can say this, it's about making money. That's what corporations do. Uh, the academic culture is about discovery, publishing, training students. So making it all work together is actually something of a challenge. In terms of practical problems, um, I believe the second most basic human urge is to hoard data. And getting the data sets uh, uh, collected and integrated across agencies, uh, even across academics, uh, is really uh, a great challenge.